a guest who is an expert on responding to unexpected crises. Robert Jensen runs a leading disaster management company that has worked on recovery efforts after disasters such as the Oklahoma City bombing, 9-11, Hurricane Katrina, and the Grenfell Tower fire. He imparts what he has learned in his new book, Personal Effects, what Recovering the Dead Teaches Me About Caring for the Living. Robert, we are so glad you could join us this evening. Thank you so much. One of your jobs in disaster management, which for many of us just seems unimaginable, is to recover and return human remains and possessions to families and governments. In your experience, what helps people move forward after tragedy? Well, a whole bunch of things. And so I describe it as people have a road they go down every day, a path. And all of a sudden, that road is not there. There's a big chasm that's just opened up. And the job of the system is to build a bridge so that people can get on that bridge and get across to what's going to be their new normal. And part of that is dealing with the consequences. It's the things that you do once the fire is out that and the TV cameras have gone. And for a lot of families, especially in the events I go to, there is not that immediate recovery of a loved one or return for a funeral or for disposition. Yeah, it must be so and disconcerting to people, Robert. And I know you have said in the past, even if you can't control the event, you can control the response. But how do you help people manage stress and stay focused? Well, what we do is we give them a roadmap. We explain what's going to happen so that they know what their role is, because that's that's what people don't have. They don't understand what's next for them. And so we try to say, here's the things that can happen, and here are the decisions you get to have. You give control back. Robert, you write about visiting Haiti in 1994 after the U.S. invasion to reestablish democracy and finding people there incredibly resourceful. You have also written in your book that when you returned in 2010 after the earthquake, the country had become aid dependent. So what is your takeaway from disasters when they strike and then how people, others in the world, can help, truly help? Well, it's about resilience. I don't have a great crystal ball, but what I have is a lot of history. I've been to two events in my lifetime that have killed almost a quarter of a million people in the time it took for most people to have a cup of coffee in the morning. And what I've seen is that we're not going to prevent those. We're not going to be successful in preventing terrorism 100% of the time. And we're not going to stop accidents from occurring because we're human. So if we know these things are going to occur, what we have to help people focus on is what are the things you do to manage the consequences? Not just survive the event, but what do you do after to help go forward? And to remember that life is going to go on. And life is, is a pretty good thing to have. But there are things you need to do to focus about making sure you understand what the risks are. What can you do to mitigate those risks now? And what can you do to make things more comfortable for yourself if you are involved? So, Robert, can you give us some examples, uh, help if, God forbid, anybody has to go through one of these events and separating out in someone's brain what he or she can control and what he or she can't? Well, I, I use an example of you're on a sailboat crossing the Pacific and a whale breaches and makes your boat sink. That's just bad luck. But preparation was having that life raft. Preparation was having the supplies in the life raft and the skill to know how to use it. And then you're at sea for 30 days till a tanker finds you. That's luck. But being able to survive in your raft for 30 days wasn't luck. So think about where you live. What are the risks? What are the things you need to have to take care of yourself until somebody can come to help? The government's job is life-saving, not recovery. There'll be plans to help with recovery, but that's based on the resources you put aside ahead of time to understand. Robert, many people did not see COVID coming. I think the majority did not. You reference in your book where people hoarded toilet paper and other necessities. What is your view on how humans often respond in the moment to crises? 
it's um, not always panic, but it is a lack of disbelief. And, and that's a big problem in crisis management. The, we see a lot of people trying to defuse a bomb that's just blown up instead of trying to deal with the aftermath and go forward. And that's because they're in shock. They don't believe this has occurred. And pandemics aren't new. We've lived through several of them, and unfortunately, we'll probably have more. And people want desperately to take action, but if they don't know what action to take, they take whatever action is available, even if it's not productive and in the end more detrimental. Robert, thank you so much for the time and sharing your insights with us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. I hope you have a good night. You too. And of course, you can find personal effects, what Recovering the Dead teaches me about caring for the living wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.